Hello, this is Craig from bitsbox.co.uk. In this video, I'm looking at the Chaos Battle Tome, The Soaples of Zinch army book for Age of Sigma. So there's a lot in this book, so this might end up being two videos, um, maybe three, but I'll try and keep it down to two. Um, I don't want to ramble on too much, but we've got a lot to look at. Um, lots of um, War Squad battalions, um, units, um, all sorts in this book. Um, everything Zinch is in this book. So yeah, I'm gonna just crack on. Um, always just look at the front and then the back. So you can see some of the new units, and we'll see plenty of them inside. So I'm just gonna crack it straight open, and we'll go on to it. Now some really cool artwork here of all. Um, uh, we've got pink, blue, and brimstone horrors, and we'll see that in colour later on in the book. Um, some of the artwork in this book is actually really nice. Um, lots of different styles, and some even. Um, are akin to the old style from the Lost of the Damned artwork, and we will see um, some of that. So, contents, um, so yeah, 136 pages, so it's a big book, um, proper sort of codex or army book size. So, now we have Fate Weaver and a Changeling, and um, Zangors, Acolytes, etc. So, yeah, um, we, of course, we always start off with fluff and some. As I said, there's some really lovely artwork in here, very colourful and really nice, different styles. You see a different sort of style of artwork here. And of course, um, sort of a page layout and everything are quite familiar to what we're used to in other Age of Sigma books. Really cool bit about um, the flesh ascended right here as well. So that's um. I suppose it's more all called Elias, who um, yeah, sort of rose to demonhood and really cool. Um, something like that would be a cool model, actually. Um. So, yeah, a lot of stuff about um, nine, because um, obviously it's a number of zinch. So, it's nice that they sort of keep that all in the fluff. Here we have some of the um, gifts of zinch. Again, like, as I mentioned earlier, like the artwork. Um, it's very akin to the old stuff in the 80s, very detailed on the swords um, and the weapons and that, really cool. Um, I really love this sort of style of artwork and I'm sort of glad they sort of kept that in. There's also like symbols as well, which you could add to your army and stuff. They're very cool. And stuff like the Arcanites. A little structure of the Arcanite cults. So the Arcanite cults are essentially... Um, your acolytes and zangors and stuff. And then of course you've got your um, demons as well. So there's none of the um, generic um, mortal chaos units in here. Um, it's all just zinch only stuff. I just want to mention that as well. And there's a really cool artwork here about different um, marks and symbols for different cults. And um, here we have different colour schemes for a cult, so I thought this was really cool actually. Um, rather than everything just being in blue and gold, um, they're actually all different Zinch cults, and they all have their own sort of different coloured armour, and even the Zangors have different coloured flesh, which I think is really cool. Um, one that really caught my eye, and what I'll probably um, use to paint my army, is the, um, the Profane Splinter cult, or just a Profane cult, and um, they basically have sort of two. Um, sort of different styles within them. I quite like the turquoise armour and the pink flames painted on their flesh. And then the Zangors themselves are like a sort of pale pink colour, so they're pretty cool. Um, lots of ideas um, and sort of inspiration to have a sort of unique looking warband. And um, we'll see later on that maybe in the next video or later on in this video that um, these different warbands actually have their own um, detachments, so to speak, as well. So that's really cool. So now we move into Servants of Change. So this um, is essentially the section of the book will just give you fluff about each um, unit, essentially. And I like how they've sort of done them all in sort of different styles as well. So a bit like Flamers and Screamers. And then the Horrors. Um, There's a cool bit of artwork from earlier. It's very sort of comic book-like, but I think it's really cool. Um, all the different styles of artwork in this book. Um, really nice touch. So we've got shamans, 
uh, Ogroids in here as well. I've got Summoners and Magisters, Fate Masters and Curslings. Um, Fate Master. It's the only one in this book that has a really old, horrible looking model, unfortunately. Um, it would have been nice if they'd have redone him. I mean, they even did the Changeling in his old model, it was pretty good, so it's a shame. Um, we've got Zangors and Acolytes. They have little bits about um, sort of special characters in it. So, Armies of Unreason, this is basically just the um, nice photograph section. All the lovely miniatures, and the new Lord of Change is just a beautiful model. Massive fan of that, we've got some blue horrors and brimstone horrors. I believe they're actually getting um, a new box as well. And we've got Fate Weaver and the Lord of Change himself. They have horrors and flamers. The new change in model I think is lovely. Really cool. So yeah, um yeah, there's the Fate Master, like his model just looks so outdated now compared to a lot of the other stuff like the flames just look so static and Yeah, um, I, I may convert my own one up if I if I choose to take one in my army for sure. But you can pair the discs as well. And then we've got a lot of the new stuff. So the Enlightened, Skyfires, Zangles, and of course the Acolytes. Yeah, just an example army. So next is Tide of Change. This is all about the um, forces. We have um, Battle Plans, Path to Glory, Battalions, etc. So, yeah, there's a lot to look through in this section. So, um, this is where it might end up being two, two videos, probably not three actually, I'm already sort of halfway through the book. So, we are going to talk about the battle trait, so you may already be familiar with this, but I'm just going to look at it anyway. So we have Masters of Destiny, so after set up, but before rolling to see which player takes the first turn in the first battle round, you roll nine dice and keep them to one side. Though it's possible for some or even all these dice to be replenished during the course of the battle, the number of dice in your pool of destiny dice can, nev can never exceed 9. And then they say um, to avoid modeling map, um, use different d6s to what you normally use. So these essentially you roll 9 dice and then you keep them results to one side. Um, if you've played Malifo and you're sort of aware of a cheat deck, um, this is essentially your cheat, cheat deck but with dice. So, um, before rolling any dice for a Zinc unit, you can use one or more of the remaining Destiny dice from your pool in their stead. The result of the roll you would, you would have made is automatically substituted with the result shown on the Destiny dice. For example, instead of rolling a dice to see how far one of your units runs in the movement phase, you could expend the Destiny dice from your pool to determine the result automatically. So, for example, if you used a dice that had a result of 5, then you'd be then running 5 inches. And then it gives you a list of all stuff you can use for dice for. So there's casting rolls, unbinding rolls, run, charge rolls, um, hit and wound rolls, save rolls, damage rolls, and battle shock tests. So if you really want to get a load of damage off with a weapon, say you've got something that uses d6 damage, and then you've got 6 in there, you could just do 6 damage using that dice, so that's very cool. Um, each Destiny, Destiny dice only allows you to substitute a single dice roll. So for example, in the case of a charge roll, you would need to expend two dice from your pool if you wished to, to predetermine the charge distance. So that's pretty straightforward. So we also have um, command traits, and there's three different command trait tables. So you've got one for the Arcanites, so you have at number one, generate two additional spells for your general from the Law of Fate. Number two is if your general is on the battlefield at the start of your hero phase. Roll a dice, and on a 1 or a 6, you can choose to replace one Destiny dice from your pool with the number you rolled. Number 3, you can attempt to unbind enemy spells with your general that are cast within 27 inches of them, rather than 18, so it's an extra 9 inches. Boundless Mutation. At the start of each of your hero phases, roll, roll a dice. On a 2 or more, your general heals d3 wounds. On a roll of one, your general suffers one mortal wound. If this result if this results in their death, you replace them with a chaos spawn under your control. 
And it's and um, basically with that, it says at the start of each of your hero phases, so you sort of have to do it as well, so... A bit risky, but if you regenerate them wounds, it would be quite cool. Add two to the bravery of all friendly Zinch Arcanites set within nine inches of your general. At the start of your hero phase, you can inflict a d3 mortal wounds on a friendly unit within three inches of your general. If you do so, then, then you can reroll any failed cast and rolls for your general for a duration of that phase and increase the range of any spells they cast by nine inches. So they have a command traits for the Arcanites. And what I like is that in Age of Sigma you can choose these all roll from them randomly and I hope that's something we'll eventually see in 40k. So for demons we have um, generate two extra spells from the Law of Change. We also have um, Nexus of Fate. So, um, so um, okay, so the first three seem to be exactly the same. So. The first three what I listed off on the Arcanites table are exactly the same on the Demons and the Mortals. So we'll just go straight into number four. Once per battle in your hero phase, you can unleash the Demon Spark. Add one to the damage characteristic of all your general's melee weapons for the rest of that turn. Number five is your opponent must attract one from any hit rolls that target your general in the combat phase. And number six, you can reroll save rolls of one for your general. And for the Mortals... We have generate two additional spells. Oh, sorry, no, we know the first three are the same, so I'll go straight into four. Um, each time your general suffers a wound or mortal wound, roll a dice, and on a roll of six, that is ignored. So but essentially, it's six up, feel no pain. Five is soul burn. Each time you make a wound roll of six or higher with any of your general melee weapons, the target suffers one mortal wound in addition to any other damage. That's pretty nice. Number six is illusionist. Your opponent must subtract one from any hit rolls that, that target your general in the shooting phase. So next we have the artifacts. And tr we have treasures and artifacts. So, um... Any if your army... Oh, excuse me. If your army includes any Arknight heroes or mortal heroes, then one may bear an artifact of power. Declare which hero has the artifact after picking your general, then pick which artifact the hero has. Ideally, this artifact should fit the model's appearance or backstory given to him. Alternatively, roll a dice on the relevant table on these two pages and randomly select one. So we've got two pages, um, essentially, of artifacts. So first, the first is for Arknight heroes, and the other is for mortal heroes. So we have Treasure of the Cult, and the first one is Ambition's End. So pick one of the bearer's me melee weapons to be an Ambition's End. Roll a dice at the end of a combat phase for any hero that suffers an unsaved wound from this weapon. On a 5 or 6 they also suffer a mortal wound. If they are a wizard, they also forget a random spell. Number 2 is Secret Eater. Pick one of the bearer's weapons to be the Secret Eater. Each time a hero is slain by this weapon, you may roll another dice and immediately add it to your pool of Destiny dice. Next we have a Spiteful Shield. Roll a dice for each successful hit roll made against the bearer in the combat phase. On a 6, the attacking unit suffers a mortal wound once the attack has been resolved. Number 4 is Soul Draught. Or Soul Draught. Um, once per battle, in the hero phase, the bearer may drink this potion. Until the end of a phase, roll 3 dice whenever they attempt to cast or unbind a spell and use the two highest results. Next we have Glamour Fetish. Your opponent must add 1 to the result of any Battleshock test they take for their units within 9 of the bearer. And lastly, um, Wind Thief Charm. So once per battle, you can use the Wind Thief Charm to remove the bearer up to double their move character characteristic. During this move, the bearer can move as if they can fly. So, nothing really overpowered there, some a bit circumstantial. So, um, yeah, a bit underwhelming, but not terrible. I must remember that these are essentially free in Age of Sigma as well, so... Not too bad. So the fated artifacts are for Zinch mortal heroes. Pick one of the bearer's melee weapons to be a wicked shard. Reroll wound rolls of one for this weapon. Reroll all failed wound rolls instead of a bearer successfully cast or unbound a spell that turn. Next is the change blade. Pick one of the bearer's melee weapons to be a change blade. Whenever a hero is slain by this weapon, you replace him with a chaos spawn under your control but it can't do anything for the turn in which the character is slain. 
3 as a Nexus Staff. Pick one of a bearer's weapons to be a Nexus Staff. Each time a hero is slain by this weapon, you can unleash the soul it has stolen in a burst of power. Roll a dice for each enemy unit within 9 inches. On a 4+, plus, and they suffer D3 mortal wounds. Next is the Time Slip Pendant. Once per battle, at the end of any combat phase, the bearer can enter a Time Slip. If they do, they can pile in and attack for a second time. Number 5 is Demon Heart. Once per battle, at the end of any hero phase, the bearer can tap into the Baleful Energies of the Demon Heart. Add 1 to the damage characteristic of all the bearer's melee weapons for the duration of the turn. However, at the end of a combat phase, roll a dice. On a roll of 1, the bearer suffers a mortal wound. And then lastly is the um, Paradoxial Shield. Add 2 to any save rolls you make for the bearer. However, you must re-roll all successful save Se uh, all successful save rolls you make for them. Um, and bear in mind you cannot re-roll a re-roll, because otherwise you'd just be rolling until they failed. So um, I think that what that means is when you make a save, you then re-roll it and accept the second result. It doesn't say that, but we have to assume that that's the case, because otherwise you'd just be... When it says all successful save rolls, <laughs> you'd just keep re-rolling until you failed. So next we have um, demon, um, demonic gifts, um, so we have demon weapons and demon powers. So Zinch demon heroes can have a weapon and a power. So for demon weapons we have a warp fire blade. Pick one of the bearer's melee weapons to be a warp fire blade. Wind rolls of six um, cause a um, mortal wound in addition to regular damage. Sentient weapons. Enemy units can never benefit from modifiers to their save rolls or save characteristic, i.e. from being in cover against attacks made by this demon. Number three is the Blade of Fate. Pick one of the bearer's melee weapons to be a Blade of Fate. If you have at least one dice in your pool of destiny dice when making an attack with this weapon, you can reroll failed hit and wound rolls of one. However, if there are nine destiny dice in the pool, the bearer, when the bearer attacks with a weapon, you can instead reroll all failed hit and wound rolls. That's quite nice. Next we have Soul Eater. Pick one of the bearer's melee weapons to be a Soul Eater. Each time the bearer slays a hero with this weapon, add one to the weapon attacks for the rest of the battle. Um, next up is Phantasmal Weapons. Improve the rend characteristic of all melee weapons wielded by this demon by one. Um, if it has a rend characteristic of nothing, it becomes a minus one. And then we have Pyrofire Stave. Add one to any wound rolls you make for the bearer's attacks in the shooting phase. And next we have the powers. We have Lord of Flux. At the beginning of each combat phase, for each enemy unit within three inches of demon, on a roll of four that or more, that unit suffers a mortal wound. Um, aura of Mutability. You can re-roll wound rolls of one for friendly units of Zinch demons within three inches of a demon. Next we have Cursed Ichor. Roll a dice. After any wounds are inflicted upon this demon, on a 2 plus, one enemy model within one inch of them suffers a mortal wound. If several enemy models are within range, randomly determine which one suffers for wound. Wellspring of Arcane Might. You can re-roll any cast and roll dice, which are showing a 1, for any friendly units of Zinch demons within 9 inches of this demon. Aspect of Zinch. Each time you expend a destiny dice while a Whilst this demon is on the battlefield, roll a dice. On a 6, you can immediately roll another dice and add it to your pool. And then lastly, Mark of the Conjurer. This demon has an intrinsic gift to find flaws in the physical plane, which is kin more easily breach when called upon to do so. I don't know why I'm just reading that paragraph suddenly. And when attempting to summon a Zinch demon unit with this demon, add 1 to the cast and roll. Okay. Next up, we have the Law of Fate. So this is the psychic power table, essentially, for Zinch wizards. So we have a Bolt of Zinch. And then underneath it says, Bolt of Change has a casting value of 8. So um, the description doesn't match the title there. Well done, GW. But um, we'll call it Bolt of Zinch for now. So the Bolt of Zinch has a casting value of 8. If successfully cast, pick a visible enemy unit within 18 inches of the caster. The unit you pick suffers d6 mortal wounds, so that's quite a nice one. 
Arcane Suggestion. Cast and value of 7. Um, if successfully cast, choose an enemy unit, which is not a hero or a monster, within 18 inches, and roll a dice and consult the table below. So, it's d3, and on a 1, they immediately suffer d3 mortal wounds. On a 2, you subtract 1 for hit and, ro and wound rolls from that unit for the rest of the turn. And number 3, until the end of the turn, subtract 1 from save rolls for the unit. So that's also quite nice, actually. Next up, we have Glimpse of the Future. There's a cast and value of 7. Only one of your wizards can attempt to, to cast a spell per turn. If successfully cast, roll a dice and add it to your destiny dice pool. Uh, Shield of Fate. Cast and value of 5. If successfully cast, pick a friendly unit, uh, a friendly zinch unit within 18 inches. Until the start of your next hero phase, you can reroll save rolls of 1 for the unit if you have 1 to 3 destiny dice. Save rolls of 1 to 2 if you have 4 to 6 destiny dice. And save rolls of 1, 2, and 3 if you have 7 to 9 destiny dice. The dice results you can reroll will change accordin accordingly if any destiny dice are added or expended from your pool. Again, for a custom value of 5, that's actually quite nice. Next, we have Infusion Arcanum. Cast and value of 5. If successfully cast until your next hero phase, you can add 1 to all hit and wound rolls of the caster. And then lastly is Treacherous Bond. Cast and value of 6. If successfully cast, pick a visible, friendly unit within 18 inches of the caster. Until your next hero phase, so long as a bonded unit is within 9 inches of the caster, roll a dice whenever the caster suffers an unsaved wound or mortal wound. On a 2+, plus, that chosen unit suffers the wound or mortal wound instead. So next up we have the Law of Change. So this is um, for demon wizards. So we have, again we have Bolt of Zinch and it's called Bolt of Change. So um, that's just copy and pasted I think uh, the first. Uh, do we have any um, other, we don't have any other. Um, so Bolt of Zinch is exactly the same but we don't have any other um, copied ones over. So Treason of Zinch, cast and value of 5. Pick a visible enemy unit within 18 inches. One model in a unit, you pick immediately attacks the rest of the unit as if it were a combat phase, using whichever weapons you choose. However, a model will never attack itself, and, it, and therefore it can only attack um, units with more than one model. Next we have Arcane Transformation. Cast and value of 7. Pick a friendly hero within 18 inches. You can permanently, permanently increase the model's move, bravery, or attacks of one of its weapons by one. However, each hero can only be chosen as a target of the spell once per battle. So that's quite a nice one, actually. Unchecked Mutation. So we have cast and value of 7. Pick a visible enemy unit within 18 inches. Suffers D3 mortal wounds, and then you roll a dice. On a 5+, plus, they suffer another mortal wound, and you roll another dice um, as above, and so on. Next we have Fold Reality. Cast and value of 7. So you pick a friendly um, Zinch Demon unit with an 18 inches and roll a dice. On a 2+, plus, you can return that many slain models to the unit. On a roll of 1, the entire unit is wiped out. So, a bit risky that one. And then we have Zinch's Firestorm. Cast and value of 9. Pick a visible enemy unit with an 18 inches and roll 9 dice. For each 6 that you roll, the unit you pick suffers D3 mortal wounds. So that could be potentially very deadly. So next up we have a battle plan, so a little Zinch mission. So, okay, so we have one player commands an army of Zinch demons. So their player's objectives are... Uh, okay, we'll go into it. So this basically says, I'm great Zinch has led you to these lands for for they are rich in sorcerous power for you to plunder. March forth and free the magic that your enemies have foolishly shackled and use them and use the unbound energies to punish them for their folly. And the occupier's objective says a horde of Zinch demons approaches your lands, intent upon draining the sorcerous wards that protect your people and, and using their powers to secure your demise. Hold them back at all costs, or all will be lost. Okay, so first of all, the 
Pyre places six terrain features, one in each of the 2x2 two two areas on the battlefield, to contain the sorceress wards that protect their land. Players can choose to set up any remaining scenery as described on the Warhammer Age of Sigma rules rule sheet, or use the example scenery shown in the map below. So if a piece of scenery contains a sorceress ward that has not yet been unbound, and we'll see how that happens in a bit. All the occupiers units that, that are within 3 inches of it are shielded and filled with determination to defend it. Roll a dice each time a model from, the, from such unit suffers a wound or mortal wound, on a 6 that wound is ignored. In addition, they can choose to re-roll Battleshock tests for any of their units that are within 3 inches um, of a piece of scenery containing a sorcerer's ward. So, pretty nice. Uh, the occupier sets up all their units first. Anywhere that is more than 12 inches from the southern edge of the battlefield. The Zinch Demons player does not set up any of their models yet, but moves them on from the southern edge of the battlefield as part of their move in the first turn of battle. So this straight... So they're straight in there at the bottom and, and you've basically got all the rest of the board to defend. Now, as each demon player takes the first turn, which makes sense. So should the Zinch demons overrun a site containing a sorceress ward, they will free the magical power stored within. If a Zinch demon unit ends its turn of infringement of a train piece containing a sorceress ward and no units belong to the occupier, then that sorceress ward is unbound. And then you, every time you're unbound, one of these you roll on the table below. So you can add. So there's no six on the table for some reason. Um, oh no, that's not actually a dice roll. Okay, so that's um, basically the user effects you get for each number of scenery um, you take. So for taking one, you can add one to any unbinding rolls. On a two, you can add one to any casting rolls. Then three, you can re roll, save rolls of one. Four is. Hit rolls of one and five is wound rolls of one. So the more you take, the more you get buffed. So victory do not use any victory conditions in the Age of Sigma rule sheet. If if a player has no rolls on the battlefield at the end of the battle round, the battle ends and their opponent wins a major victory. Alternatively, if the Zinch Demon player successfully unbinds all six sorcerer swords, the battle ends and they win a major victory. Otherwise the battle lasts for five battle rounds. At the end of the fifth battle round, if a Zinch Demon player has unbound fewer than four Sorceress Wards, the Occupier wins a major victory. If four have been unbound, the results are draw, and if more than four, then it's a major victory. So next we have the Skeins of Fate. So we'll just go straight. So this is for Zinch Arcanites, and we'll just go straight into a battle plan. Um, the inhabitant and, and that is the, uh, the the inhabitant is the um, opponent of the Zinch player. They earn two laurels of victory each time they wipe out a unit belonging to the Zinch Arcanite player. Whoever they slay one of the leaders, and um, they get three laurels of victory instead. And we'll see what um, laurels of victory are in a minute. At the start of each battle round, before rolling to see which player takes first hand, the Zinch Arcanite player must roll a dice and consult the Zinch's will table. And that's um, Sorry, I'll consult the Zinch's will table on the next page to discover what deeds the Zinch requires the cult to perform and how the Zinch Arcanite player can earn laurels of victory. So the Zinch Arcanite player can set up any free terrain features anywhere on the battlefield. The players can either generate all remaining scenery from the battle as described on the Age of Sigma rule sheet or use, for example, scenery shown on the map. Starting with the Zinch Arcanite player, each player takes and turns to set up their units as described on the Age of Sigma rule sheet. Models must be set up in their own territory as shown on the map. The Arcanite player decides who takes the first turn in the first battle round. Do not use any of victory conditions for the Age of Sigma rule sheet. If a player has no models on the battlefield, then their opponent gains a major victory. Otherwise, it lasts five battle rounds. The player that has earned the most laws of victory um, at the end of the fifth battle round, gets a major victory. So um, that's basically what you get through the, um, Zinch's will, and then you roll on a d3. So one laurel of victory each time you successfully cast a spell or unbind a spell cast by an enemy wizard. 
Um, number three is Ritual Slaughter. Um, one Laura Victory for every nine models that are removed during the first battle round. Or during the battle round, sorry. And then three is earn two Laura's Victory each time an enemy unit is wiped out during the battle round. And three each time an enemy hero is slain. So uh, that's quite cool, it's different ways to earn victory points for each one. So this brings us up to Path to Glory. Um, I'm going to leave this first video here as we've hit the half hour mark. I need to catch my breath a little bit. It's a lot of reading to do in a short space of time, especially out loud. So yeah, so we've looked at the battle plans. We've looked at um, psych uh, the pa psychic powers, so we'll call them, and um, uh, what are they called? The, um, you know what we've seen, the um, demon weapons are artifacts, that's what I was looking for, and command traits, so we've seen all that. And then next one we are going to look at Path to Glory and then all the war scrolls, uh, so we've got formations, etc. So we'll be looking at probably all the stuff that you really want to see will be in the next video. So that'll be out very soon after this one, um, I'm not going to drag these on, so. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Um, Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.